Hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well, staying safe and sane and all that, checking it out on your family and uh, still managing all of this okay. Um, uh, we're going to do one more video uh, lecture just to wrap things up. And uh, please, please, please be sending me your projects so I can be sending you feedback. And then we'll we'll do a final in a couple of weeks and that'll be the end of things. So hang on, we're almost there. Um, Today's lecture, um, for some people, uh, maybe we'll say, why, why would I ever have to know this? This has nothing to do with making music. And there's some truth to that. I'm not delusional in, in thinking that you can't make great, amazing music. And most, most people, most of the population came without digging this deep into, into the MIDI specification and all of that. But, but I do honestly believe that, that some of this stuff is is really helpful for those of you that really want to dig deep and, and learn, particularly like learn if you buy a keyboard, you buy a controller. There, most people really only scratch the surface on anything really. Most DAWs, most plugins, most uh, keyboards or synths or, or control surfaces you buy, most people barely scratch the surface on what they're capable of. And particularly controllers and keyboards, um, knowing some of the things that I'm gonna talk about today can really help you dig deep and really do advanced uh, programming, advanced uh, utilization of functions that most people never find and get to. And so hang on through today's lecture and, and some of this stuff uh, will, will be really useful for those of you that kind of want to go the next step with, particularly with hardware keyboards and control surfaces and stuff like that, I think more than anything else. Um, and uh, otherwise it's just some pretty good basic knowledge that we sometimes we see a variety of things over and over and over again in MIDI and doll land. And so uh, that's why we're gonna do what we're gonna do today. Um, so first of all, what we have to do though is in order to make sense of a few of these things is we got to do some basic binary, uh, understanding how binary works. And so um, to do that and to, re to uh, kind of make a point with some of this, we're gonna look at some numbers. Now, starting, I don't know, maybe when you were age three or four or five or six and probably through the first part of kindergarten and first grade, you, your teachers and your parents hammered into your head repeatedly, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? You know, hopefully don't have any problems with what we're doing here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And at this point in your life, hopefully at this point in your life, when you see this and you get to nine and your brain doesn't freak out and go, ah, what's next? There's no more numbers, right? Hopefully you don't do that. Hopefully you realize at this point in your life that you just go to the tens place, right? 10, 11, 12, 13. And then when you get down to the bottom and you're at 19, you don't freak out again and you just say, oh, you know, no, no big deal, no problem, no sweat. I know I just go to 20, 21, right? It's because we used uh, our brains have been programmed from that very young age that we work in a base 10 system. And that's how that base 10 system works. And so when we do binary and this other thing that we're going to learn called hexadecimal, it's not base 10. Okay. We're going to do, we're going to talk real quick about making some of you maybe have had a computer class where this makes sense. And probably most of you haven't, um, but how to make sense of binary. So binary, um, is we've only got two, we've got zeros and ones to work with. That's it binary, base two, okay? And we've got to do everything that we want to do with those two digits. That's how computers work, okay? It makes them, allow, allows them to do very, very quick, fast computations because of the simplicity of all of that. And so first I'm gonna do this, right? And we're gonna to start to try to make sense of what this is, okay? Uh, as we mentioned in uh, our previous lecture, we talked about uh, with co computers, we talked about uh, a single bit is a one or a zero. That's a bit. A byte is eight bits. So this is eight bits is a byte. Four bits is a nibble, right? Again, I didn't make that up. That's for real. And the way that this works is that... So how does this work? If I have a one here... That's one, okay? So far so good, right? 
but I can't put a two here. To go two, to write two, I can't write a two because it's binary. We only have zeros and ones to work with. So I need to turn on the two's place, okay? And that's how I write two. And then to write three, I need to write one plus two, because this is the two's place, is three. Now if I want to write four, this is now the four's place. And that's four. Five is one plus four equals five. Six is, oops, ah, I almost tried to write a two there, you see that? Two plus four equals six. One plus two plus four equals seven. And then I need to go turn on the eighth place, eight. Okay. Nine is one plus eight, and so on and so forth, right? So that's how you, whoops, I look like a four-year-old. Sorry. Um, this isn't super easy. But you get the idea how to do basic counting, right? And how uh, this number system works. So let's do... Okay, how much is that? Zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Okay, I'm gonna pause, give you a second to try to figure that out. Pause the video, try to figure out how much this is. Zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. Okay, go, 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 go. The answer is 44. Hopefully you got 44, and it's 44 because uh, 32 plus eight is 40 plus four is 44, okay? Um, a few more things. This spot right here is called the most, can't do an S backwards, significant bit. And this spot right here is called the least significant bit. That's gonna become important in a little bit, okay? We could do some more examples of that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut ahead to another type of math that is used, or counting number system, that is used in computers and digital audio, and specifically MIDI here, and that is hexadecimal. In hexadecimal, unlike base 10, where we've got zero through nine to work with, and unlike binary, where we have zero to one to work with, it actually has more. And so that looks something like this. Mirror it out. So far so good, right? That looks normal, but it's a base 16 system. So we then have A. Okay, so that's the usable digits. Okay, and so if I just say a value of C, that's worth 9, 10, 11, 12. C equals 12. Okay. If I have two digits, let's see here, I'm going to do um, 2F. Time out. Yes, sweetie. Oh, cool. Thanks. Okay, so 2F. F equals 15. We already talked about that right here. Two, because I'm in the second placeholder, is two times 16. And so 16 times two is 32, plus 15 equals 47, okay? We're not gonna have to do a lot of hexadecimal math, but I wanted you to know what that system was because we actually see it a lot. We might see it in DAWs. We certainly see it a lot on control surfaces and other controllers um, to indicate values uh, in a very, very small uh, placeholder system, right? And to, to, you can show really, really large values in a really short, small, uh, two placeholder system. That's one of the big benefits of hexadecimal, okay? Okay, so with that being said, okay, so what are we gonna do with this stuff? We are going to look at MIDI messages or a summary of how basic MIDI messages are put together 
Um, so you know how that that works on a very detailed fundamental level. And so MIDI messages are usually broken down and are three, sometimes uh, two, oftentimes three bytes, right? Three groups of eight bits, right? And there are what is called status bytes and data bytes. And so anytime where this particular place right here, the most significant bit, remember, anytime that's a one, then we have a status byte. And anytime that that is a zero, that is a data byte. Status bytes tell us what to do, data bytes tell us to what extent or to what degree to do them, okay? And they're broken down as this chart here indicates. So if I'm gonna play a node on message, Okay, it's a, one of the basic fundamental MIDI messages we talked about at the beginning of the semester. It's like, it says, hey, play me a C7. Play me a, a, uh, a, right? A4, something like that. And so we start with the status byte of one, zero, zero, one. That's the first nibble of the status byte. And then it would be, Zero, 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 zero would be MIDI channel one. Um, that's a whole nother part of, of this concept is MIDI channel one corresponds to zero, 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 zero. The highest that I can go with a nibble is 15, right? And so if all of these are turned on, then that actually corresponds to MIDI channel 16. I know that's a little confusing. That's a, it's one of the things that confuses people a little bit learning this stuff. Um, but hang on, let's go through this. Um, so this is a node on message on MIDI channel one, okay? And then I need to say, what is the key or the note number, okay? And a note number corresponds to any of the, the notes on the keyboard. We can have 127 um, different note possibilities here. And then the velocity. And so one thing I usually like to try to point out with here is, is you've probably seen it. And here I'm recording the dialogue to our lecture here. But if I create a MIDI channel, you probably noticed this, a lot of people have, and then don't ever figure out why they see this. Okay, I just created a MIDI channel. And in the inspector, Let me move this over so you can see. Watch what happens. If I pan, I can go that way, minus 64, that way, plus, one, plus 63. What does that equal? 127. If I add the volume and turn the volume up all the way, where does it go? 127. If I send, if I use one of these sends, what is sweet. 16. 16. Uh, the send values go to 127. Um, we see it all the time. All basic MIDI data, uh, never use the word all, almost all basic MIDI data is represented on a value from zero to 127 because we use a data byte to represent its value, okay? And so that would be the first data byte would represent the note number. And then my second data byte would be the velocity. And this would be a velocity of two, very quiet, okay? This would be note number uh, eight, which would be a super, super, super low number or low note. Um, and so it takes those, takes three bytes to indicate most of these primary uh, MIDI messages, okay? And let's see, what else do I wanna show you here? Um, so here's all of the primary ones we deal with. Uh, note on, note off, polyphonic key pressure. I think we did a demonstration of that early in the semester where how hard I hold or push on a note after its initial uh, striking 
and I'm varying that, you can assign to all sorts of interesting parameters. So you can make pan and modulation and filter, all sorts of filter sweeps and other fun things happen. If you have a keyboard that's capable of polyphonic key pressure um, or channel key pressure, polyphonic means it's individual notes has an individual control, which is very, very rare. Only higher end keyboards have that. And channel pressure means anything on that channel is gonna be set based on an average of what you're doing. Um, pitch bend is another one. Uh, I'll point out here, there's all sorts of interesting things making use of control changes or continuous controllers in MIDI. And so if I have first four end values of one, zero, one, one, that says, hey, we're going to do a control change. Alert, status byte. One means on at the beginning says it's a status byte. 1011 says it's a control change. N, 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 N means it's what MIDI channel. So if this is 0, 0, 0, 0, it's MIDI channel 1. If this is 1, 1, 1, 1, it's MIDI channel 16. That's how all of that correlates out, like I just said. Okay. And then the first data byte is uh, represented by what control change it is. And then the second data byte is whatever value it is. And so then I say, well, what are the control change messages? So here I'm going to look at the control change message data bytes. And here are all of what the standard ones are. Uh, foot controller, we use that a lot for drum programming. Uh, what else is in there? Pan, different expression controllers, um, all sorts of stuff like that. Breath controller. Um, some of them are defined. Some of them are undefined and uh, are then left up to manufacturers to implement in different ways. Um, so there's a full list of control chain messages. And this is part of where knowing this stuff can be useful because if you understand some of how this works, you understand um, how hex works a little bit um, and these messages, when you start looking at the digging deeper into using the specifications and the advanced functionality of what a lot of these devices can do, um, you, you look at the back of a reference manual and you find a couple of things. One is a MIDI implementation chart, which is super important, I think, to understanding. Implementation chart, images, and here you can quickly see that there are dozens and dozens and dozens of something that looks almost very identical to the same thing. That's because this is a very standard format that you can find in the back of most manuals. And, and what it does is it tells you basic what can this device do, what it does and doesn't do. Basic MIDI channel uh, transmits. Uh, no. Is it recognize all channels? Yes. 1 through 16. Mode. Uh, does it transmit MIDI mode information? No, no. Does it recognize MIDI mode information? No, no. Um, note numbers, yes, 0 through 127. Note velocity on off, yes, sends and receive, transmits and recognize. Um, after touch, does it do after touch? Yes. Um, both key and, uh, which is polyphonic and channel, okay, like we just talked about. Does it do pitch bend? Yes. Um, zero means yes, X means no. And then here are the modes. We just talked about, remember all that stuff in the beginning of the semester? Omni on poly, omni off poly. See, that's here, proof. I didn't make that crap up. Here it is. Um, mode three, omni off poly. And here are, here's just information in terms of each one of these things, what a, a device can and can't do. Here's a different one. Here's the SH-201 um, in a little bit different format. But, uh, has all of the same information. And also here uh, shows both the hex and the uh, decimal format for some of these things. Again, why it's good. Uh, let me actually stop for a second and tell you. Um, one of the reasons why it's good to have a basic idea of what hex is all about is that that 127, a lot of times if you have a really basic keyboard controller and it has a limited space little LCD display, it indicates numbers and control change values and other parameters in hexadecimal. So if you see something that says something like um, 2F, um, 7F, something like that, then that's indicating that that's a hexadecimal number or value um, that corresponds to some sort of control change message or something like that. Uh, here's just a look, another look at the back of another manual and you can see there's all, all sorts of parameters. Again, a lot of these are control change messages uh, other types of specific parameters. Oh, cool. They actually have here a hexadecimal conversion chart for you. So on the back of there, so if you're not hip and don't remember or can't memorize all of those things, um, 
seven F corresponds to one twenty seven. Yeah, so it just allows you having a basic understanding of how some of these things work is really helpful again when you want to start making use of the more advanced functions oftentimes in keyboards and controllers and whatnot so um that was a pretty quick run through i know you probably have some questions we'll do a discussion board related to uh a lot of this stuff and so uh again send me your projects let me know how you're doing uh stay safe and i'll talk to you soon everybody thanks bye-bye